Hey everyone, I'm kind of at a loose end at the moment. I put today aside to work on some other projects I'm developing and instead I've spent it just staring blankly at a screen. I did have time to go over to my friend Charlie Hayes' channel and she's just posted a video about Independent Bookshop Week. They're doing a tag for it on Booktube and it's not my wheelhouse but I figured it could be fun so I'm going to throw in as well. There are 10 questions in total and this is number one. What books are currently in your bag? Um, what I've just fished out of mine is volume three of Brat Queens. Uh, this is an image publication and it's basically if Warcraft was crossed with Tank Girl. It's loud, it's brash, there's some very creative use of violence and swearing. It's just a good fun time as decent moments of drama in it but it's just hysterically funny and I adore every second of it so I do really recommend that. A book I have been reading in a more novelised sense is something I've got on my Kindle so I imagine some people just started booing at the screen. It's a book by a guy called Andy Futuro and it's called No Dogs in Philly. It's Lovecraftian cyberpunk noir. I'll leave you to imagine what that's like. Question the second. What's the last great book you read? The last great book I read was probably a reread, which would have been um, J.G. Ballard's High Rise. I was rereading it for a review I was going to do uh, when the film came out earlier this year. And I actually read this book several years ago and I wasn't a fan of it, but I came back to it. And do you know what? It's actually pretty decent. And so I can really recommend that one. What book have you gifted the most? That would be... Um, Christopher Reese's Unleashed. I remember when this book came out back in about, I think it was 2008, um, and I fell in love with it straight away. I must have bought at least three or four copies for other people and just left them on top of their bags or slipped them into their pockets. It has a twilighty feel to it. It's about teenagers, it's about werewolves and stuff, but it's just, it's so much more mature, it's so well written. It just, it understands what it's like to be an isolated teen, an isolated teen in love, to not be understood, but also to feel like you've connected with this great inner strength and power, but ultimately a power which can destroy you. Number four is, what's your favourite independent bookshop? That's quite an easy one for me because it's a place called Queen's Park Books, which is in Queen Park, which is in like northwest London. It's run by my friend Laura Dodds, and it's just a nice little old school dusty bookshop. Staff are really helpful. They've got a great selection of books. So yeah, that would be my answer to that question. What's been your favourite book recommended by bookseller or fellow booktuber? Not a booktuber, so I'll have to skip that part. But despite the fact that I worked for Waterstones for nine years, and so there were a lot of great books which I was recommended by people I worked with, the one that springs to mind is uh, Brian Lee O'Malley's Lost at Sea. I kind of was late coming to the craze of Scott Pilgrim and James Jackson, who I used to work with and who I still do film stuff with today, recommended this to me. Um, it was O'Malley's first work. I think, sometimes I think that I actually prefer this to Scott Pilgrim. It's a little more slow burning. It's a little less sort of frenetic and everything. I love Scott Pilgrim now, but if you've not read Lost at Sea, I hugely, highly, enormously recommend it. Question number six is, what's your favourite bookshop memory? Um, again, hard to answer because I had, you know, nearly a decade's worth of them. If you put a gun to my head and demanded I give you one specifically, it's probably when I worked in Camden. Um, a lot of famous people used to go, and a lot of actors, musicians, stuff like that. I remember one day I was working in the basement, which was the non-fiction floor at the Waterstones there, and um, Damien Lewis came in. And... He wanted help finding a book about Mauritius because him and his family were going on holiday there. And you do get used to it, but there is a weird thing about seeing this, you know, famous actor coming in and talking to you about something which is quite mundane. Um, and he just got talking about, you know, oh, you know, price of flights and holidays these days and stuff like that. And it was just it was just nice. He was an absolute diamond. Damien Lewis is an absolute legend. and He's a really nice guy. So it was a good bookshop memory and a very distinctive one. What do bookshops mean to you? What do you love about them? Question seven. Um, I tend to think and feel about them what I feel about a lot of the things I spend my time doing online now. 
um, sort of scouring the recesses um, and the little nooks and crannies. I love discovering things. I love coming across things that other people might have overlooked. So when I think about decent bookshops, um, be they sort of, you know, more commercialised ones or more sort of um, niche ones, any great memory I have of one is basically where I've stumbled across something on a shelf that I thought, wow, what the hell is this? Or this is so curious that I have to pick it up. So I think that's what they that's also what they mean to me. They're just they're places of discovery. Ooh, okay, question eight, quite a heavy gauge one. What are the books that made you? Probably a Haynes manual. Which books have most affected or influenced you? That is a hugely difficult question. Okay, right, so very quick story. I basically didn't read for most of my teens. When I was 19, I went to university and I discovered an author called Poppy Z. Bright. She did um, Lost Souls and Drawing Blood and a very important book called The Exquisite Corpse. She is a long-term friend of my favourite author, Caitlin Rebecca Kiernan. So, in terms of the books that made me, and the ones that have affected most influenced me, it's definitely going to be these. Probably the one that made me in terms of a reader, which is what I presume the question means. It's this one. Um, it came out in 1998. It's Caitlin Keenan's first release novel. Here's how Neil Gaiman describes it. A remarkable novel, a powerful and disturbing story, deeply, wonderfully, magnificently nasty. That's a really good way of describing it. Um, the thing I loved about this book, and a lot of her early works in particular, is her use of language. She really showed me how you could play with the English language, how to make it beautiful, give it more punch, but also show that you can really play with it without entirely breaking the rules. The you know the English language is far more flexible than you know many people are sort of led to believe. She has been described by some, I think it was Neil Gaiman again who described her as the poet and bard of the wasted and lost. Find Kiernan novels. Definitely find Silk. Um, Tales of Pain Wonder. That's a good one. That's a short story collection. In some ways, I kind of consider this my favourite book of all time. It's got a great story in it called Tears Seven Times Salt, which is just gorgeous, but also devastating. Um, and if you're in a little more of a mainstream mind... Um, she won the Bram Stoker Award a couple of years ago with The Drowning Girl, um, which, again, definitely buy. So, yeah, I think if you ask me um, what are the books that made me, which ones have deeply affected me, I think it's probably fair to go into that regard. What book do you recommend readers gift for Father's Day? Um, a, well, it's a bit late, Father's Day was yesterday, but um, my father actually died several years ago. So it's not actually something I've had to think about for a long time. But probably based on what I remember, he loved football and things like that. So maybe, I don't know, maybe some of the latest biographies or something. But me and him, especially when I was a kid, he used to lend me lots of books on the paranormal and things like that. UFOs, Illuminati. I particularly loved stuff about like monsters and ghosts and things. So maybe saying in that regard, there is a writer called David Weatherly who... Uh, has done a couple of books. He did one called Strange Intruders, which was about sort of uh, Slender Man and things like that. The one I'd probably get my dad for Father's Day, just so that he could read it and then I could borrow it and probably hide it from him, is one called Black Eyed Children, um, which is about the phenomenon of these mysterious children who are supposed to, you know, truly exist and basically are little kids with coal black eyes who basically try and get them into your house or your car and do something so black eyed children probably so we come to our final question which is what is at the top of your tbr pile to be read um these are two books i actually got in queen's park books the other day the first one is the unbeatable squirrel girl squirrel girl is a really obscure marvel superhero that i've always kind of wanted to catch up with she's one of those d-list characters who's just the premise is so bizarre, it's almost magical. Also, this is kind of research because one of the series I'm working on is actually about spotlighting lesser-known characters in films, in books, in comics, and whatever. And I'm looking at it, I think Squirrel Girl might be the first. So I can justify this as kind of work. 
the next one, um, I'll read this after I've done No Dogs in Philly, um, is The Dragon's Blade, The Reborn King by Michael R. Miller. Uh, he actually did a signing at Queen's Park. That's why I was there the other night. Lovely guy. Really passionate about writing. It's a fantasy novel. Basically focuses on dragons. Um, basically the dragons have taken on human form. That's how they live now. So it's a really, from what I can tell from what he was saying in his um, Q&A, like, it's a really interesting premise about how dragons would act if they were turned into humans. Um, I, there's an anime I love called Wolf's Reign, which has a similar sort of premise with wolves. So... It just sounds really interesting. I'm not a huge fan of fantasy, um, you know, in books or TV or film. Um, I'm more of a sci-fi guy. I lean more in that direction. But looking at this and listening to him talk the other night, I'm going to give this a spin. So it looks like I've done a book video. Um, hopefully it wasn't too rambling and incoherent. But anyway, it was fun. I've enjoyed it, so I hope you have too. As I say, there's a lot of stuff going on this week for um, Independent Bookshop Week. Check out Charlie's video. There's loads around as well. So enjoy. Have a good one.